Hello and welcome to today's episode of Jim's Raw Cooking. Today we will be making Polish borscht. I probably can't pronounce that, but we're going to try and make it. So it is a kind of Polish beetroot soup, which I have been requested to make by my two Polish friends, Nimo and uh, uh, Milos. And let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly cut my onion, which has started to grow away. Um, unfortunately. Um, so it's only going to be very rough cuts for this one. So kind of no slicing today. Uh, but yes, let's get on with it. This this one has a, a lot of steps. So um, I'm going to see if I can make it to the end. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of ingredients and stuff out already, as well as uh, kind of beef on the other side. So yes, we're starting with our one medium onion to start off with, and we're just uh, peeling the outside layers off, putting them in our little waste bin, like that. very roughly so I'm um, kind of in half like that and then in half again all right so what we're going to do now that we've done that is we're going to pop it in a bowl because why not while I destroy it and drop it everywhere So, we've got our onion and we've got our huge saucepan for today. Um, pop that on there. I'm going to bring you around a bit more. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of olive oil on it. And we're just going to kind of drizzle that across the bottom, like that. Which I'm going to bring you even closer so you can actually see inside the pot. There you go. Right, so we're going to pop that olive oil over there. I'm just going to kind of move the pot about so we can spread out the oil. And then what we're going to do is we've got a packet of diced beef, which I'm going to open with a spare knife. I've always opened it a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the heat, like that. We're going to put the saucepan over the heat. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Yeah. So this is a metal saucepan, so I've got to be careful with my hands on the handles. I just want to try and remember. It's also warming up, so it might change shape a little bit. It may also burn a little bit. It's interesting, so we just need to keep an eye on this one because it's. Am I actually going to put the fan on? Ah, okay. That was. The metal pans are scary. It's probably warmed up now, though, so, um. Sorry for, for scaring anybody but I got scared as well. Don't worry. So now that that's warmed up, hopefully, we're gonna put in our beef. Yeah, it's alright. Um I've just been told that, that that always happens to this pan. So we're just gonna put our beef in like that and it's gonna sizzle straight away. I'm gonna keep on moving it around. Alright, so uh, this is already off to a great start. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this down a lot because this pan is very hot. Yeah, turn that down. Okay, that's a bit more manageable. I'm sorry for the noise of the extractor, but this is quite a, uh, an exciting pan to use. And by exciting, I mean terrifying. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to sauté our um, beef. I think it's uh, 400 grams of beef for about two to three minutes uh, until it's uh, kind of brown on the outside. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our onion that we just chopped and we're going to saute it for I think it's about four minutes more. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pour a lot of stock in. 
and uh, we're going to leave it to bubble while we do the rest of our ingredients. Alright, so it's probably been about a minute and a half or so now. Just continue to just stir around a bit. It's still quite red, as you can see. Just letting it go about this business in cooking. Leave it there for a second, and we stir around again. So I've got to be very careful for this uh, this pan because it's, uh, it's not a non-stick pan, so it's a stick pan. Why not? Um, we've got to be careful to keep on moving it around. And scraping the uh, bits off the bottom that are going to burn. All right, so that's kind of getting there and it will continue to cook throughout the rest of it. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit as we keep on going. All right, so I'm going to get our onions ready and I'm going to double check the recipe. Uh, yes, so we're getting our onions ready next to it. Give it a couple of seconds more and then we're going to go for it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wow, onions! All right, so our onions are in there as well now. Um, what we're also going to do at this stage is we're going to, well, throughout the whole recipes, we're going to put salt and pepper into it. Like that. It's quite a lot of salt, but it should be all right. We're just going to make sure that our soup is seasoned well in order to get the maximum tastiness. That's what we're aiming for: maximum tastiness. I have been informed this is a very tasty soup. All right, so I'm gonna go for a couple more minutes on this. Um, and I'm going to pause the video while that's happening. I'll see you in three or four minutes. All right, so it's been about three or four minutes and um, I've boiled the kettle while I've been waiting. And um, I've got some vegetables, they're not vegetables, stock, meat stock. So this is uh, kind of a combination between chicken and beef because I ran out of stock cubes. I'm just going to finish dissolving this here, like that. I've actually left this spoon in, so it's quite hot. So that should be about ready. And what we're going to do first, we're going to pour a little bit in, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scrape the bottom of the pan to make sure there isn't any huge burnt bits attached to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, 200 and 30-ish millilitres of stock, so that's uh, about a litre. I'm going to get some more. This is kind of a... Uh, approximate because my jug isn't very big. There you go. Two full kettles. Um, so I'm just going to break this other stock cube up, as you can see. Um, all right, you can't see this. Uh, there you go. I'm also going to mix that in, as you can see. Mix, 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 mix. And I'm too lazy to keep on doing that, so I'm going to pour that in as well. And that should make up our stock for the soup, like that. All right, we're going more. Am I recording? Yes, I am recording. That's good. And we're also going to pop in a bay leaf. Wow. Okay, so. We're going to reduce it to a low heat, which it kind of is on already. We're going to get the lid. We're going to leave it with the uh, little steam escapey nozzle things. Oh, like, ah, ah, okay, uh, yeah, I see my silly reflection. Uh, we're going to leave it with the steam escapey nozzles on. Nozzle, nozzles open, sorry. I'm going to pop it on. And we're going to leave it for approximately uh, half an hour, which I'm going to set my. My timer for like that, um, and we're going to leave that to go like that. And while we're doing that, we're going to go back to our other vegetables. Wow. Okay, so we're going to start with our cabbage. So with our cabbage, um, we're going to kind of get the bigger knife for this to start off with. We're going to kind of cut down. <laughs> if I'm strong enough, which I'm not. See how we can do this. Kind of 
put down around the core. If I can do that, which I'm failing at. <laughs> this cabbage is defeating me. Um, I'm too weak for, for the, the super cabbage. Oh. The cabbage is strong. Alright, I'm just going to kind of keep on going round until I get to the bottom. Oh, that's some strong cabbage. So we're going to see, after I've pulled that knife out, if we can pull the core out. There you go, so that's the kind of uh, rooty core bit. We don't want that. It's going in there. Alright, we also kind of... Oh, okay, so we've got our bits. We're going to peel out peel off the outside layers. I'm going to put them in there because they're quite tough. Like that. They're a bit dirty as well, so that's fine. Um, and what we're going to do with the rest of our cabbage is we're going to uh, peel off the leaves a bit by bit, and we're going to chop them up finely, or as finely as we can get. Like that. I'm going to move the other knife out of the way. Um, and we're going to keep on doing this until we have approximately, let me check my recipe, uh, five to six cups, so probably one bowl's full, or a little bit more. There you go, I'll put that in there. And we'll keep on doing that for the leaves while we're waiting for the beef and the onion to cook a little bit more. I'm also going to turn off the... Um, the extractor so you can actually hear me now. We just jump on that. It's uh it's going well when it's in there, which is nice. So we're just gonna chop this cabbage up finally. What we're gonna do with this is because we don't need it until quite late in the recipe, is we're going to um, soak it in water and vinegar. A little bit of vinegar. Um, until later to keep it flesh and nice and tasty. All right, so it's going in there. So just peeling off the layers and chopping them quickly. So it's a race against time for me, both before and after. Go to bed eventually because I've got to get up tomorrow. And um, against the uh, recording time on the camera. So I've only got 8 gig at the moment, unfortunately. I'm using the other SD card for my phone actually. I'm sure I've stolen for all my huge music library. I'm going to keep on popping that in there. Alright, we're going well. Being careful of fingers, he says. Still going all right over there. Just keeping an eye on it, so I don't know. I don't quite trust that pan. That bang it made earlier was quite terrifying. All right, so we'll keep on going here. After we've done our cabbage, we're going to move on to the carrot, the beetroot, and uh, the potato that we've got left. Alright, still going here. I'm going to move on to the other lettuce part, now that we're on to the kind of core in there, which isn't as good for this. Trying to be as quick as possible while still keeping my fingers. I 
so this is a, uh, I think I mentioned at the beginning, a recipe that has been suggested by a few of my fellow friends, which is very nice of them. Um, I think I'm going to aim to do something with uh, chorizo and chicken at some point, because I've got a few requests for that as well, which uh, people have messaged me about. So this is one way of doing bush that I've heard of. Um, this is the one that Nemo asked me to do. Um, there is another way that you can do where I think you strain the vegetables in the soup, but you don't actually put them in, and you get the flavours out of them, which is quite interesting. Uh, that kind of makes it a lot thinner soup, which is nice. But um, I need this for a meal, so I can need a, a thick, hearty soup. I'm going for the kind of uh, whole vegetable one today, which I've been told to do anyway, so that's nice. I think we're getting to the end of the cabbage that we need, so I guess probably a couple more leaves, and then uh, we can leave these to soak. So I'll do one more. I might, I'll do two. Still keeping an eye on the pan, and we're keeping on going. I've made a lot of mess with this cabbage. Okay, so that's all the cabbage we could ever possibly want in a soup. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fill a plastic bowl. With water, which I have here. I'm actually going to put it over here, like that. Um, I'm going to put all the cabbage in it, like that. And that's going to sit in there for a bit, keep it nice and wet and nice. And we're also going to put a tiny bit of vinegar in it. I presume it's just normal vinegar, but I can't remember from the recipe. There you go. It's only a little bit of that vinegar, and we're going to probably wash it about a bit with a, a spoon. A little bit of, like that, why not? That's fine. Um, okay, so keeping an eye on our, all that's bubbling away quite nicely, I'm going to turn that down a bit. I'm going to move this to the, uh, ne, ne. there you go, I'm going to move that to the back so it can cook on a lower heat, which is this one, there you go, that's going to go over to there, like that, go a little bit lower, alright, oh, that's fine, alright, so that's going to keep on going, we've got about 20 minutes left on that, which is good, we're making good time with our, our vegetables, whew, so, now that we've made a huge mess with this cabbage, which I'm going to pop to the side over here. So we can use the rest of the cabbage in a, a, a different recipe, I suppose. I can't think of one. Um, stir fry? Can you put cabbage in stir fry? I don't know. Um, okay, so, what have we got next? Uh, done the cabbage. We need to... get our beetroot. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, that over there. We're going to peel them. So now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut the roots off. Not the roots, the stems, sorry. All the way around. Um, and the tail. Just like that. So these are fresh beetroots. Um, you can use pre-cooked ones if you want, but um, I thought I'd be adventurous today. But if this does go horribly wrong, I can use the, the pre-cooked ones that I have in my fridge. Alright, so that's uh, three small beetroots, like that. And then what we're going to do, if I remember correctly, is we're going to peel them. Which I hope is just like a potato. There you go. That's easy. Lovely kind of purple colour there. Deep red. It's going to look like I've cut myself now. I'm bleeding! I'm not bleeding. 
still going to turn that down a bit more. Over there, on the stove, just keeping an eye on it. We only want it to kind of cook slowly, we don't want it to burn or anything. So, peeling our beetroot. Ah, it's getting a little bit slippery. <laughs> I can do this. I'm going to get red all over my hands. That's one. Um, we're going to set that aside while we do the others. And <laughs> yeah, I haven't murdered anybody, I swear. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, peel the beetroot uh, on a grater. Not grater, not peel it. We're going to grate the beetroot on the grater. There you go. And that's going to be prepared for later when we um, we saute it later, which we're going to do with all of our vegetables that we're preparing now. So that's two of them. They're just red potatoes, really. Beetroot are very tasty. I could probably eat a whole cooked one just just on its own. I do love beetroot. And so it's good in salads and stuff. Like a bit of beetroot salad. Alright, so we're almost there. There you go, that's three beetroots and a load of mess. And um, are you gonna catch me red handed because of the beetroot? Mass beetroot theft. Rob was caught red handed. Okay, so I'm going to get out uh, my grater. My grater. My grater. My great grater. Uh, and we're going to. Attempt to peel these beetroot, which is going to work. Wow. Okay. That's working better than I expected. All right. Just being careful of my, uh, my hands on this one. Particularly good at grating. Just trying to grip it well. We have another 15 or 16 minutes until our beef will be ready. We've got until then to finish all our other vegetables. Oh. Okay. I am just making a huge mess. I need to practice it grating, so uh, I don't know, cheese is a lot easier than uh, beetroot, I can tell that. Oh. See, I can't tell if I cut myself or if uh, it's just the beetroot. Look at that, this is just murder weapon. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just going everywhere. Oh dear. I will make it to the end. Okay, I may give up with this beetroot soon and just chop it finally. Yeah, I'm just going to go to the side one and just kind of chop it like that. To the next one. Okay, what I'm going to actually do because I'm uh, pressed for recording space is I'm going to press pause and I'll let you know when I've grated it. <gasps> Be back in a minute. All right, so I finished murdering the uh, the beetroot and I've got permanently stained hands now. Um, I've tried to wash it off, but it's just staying. So um, I'm just going to pick up a few of the bits that I've kind of scattered everywhere. 
pop them in. So there's nothing wrong with them. Like that. And then we're going to move on to our carrot and our potato. Which is going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to peel both of them very quickly. And then we're going to dice them up. We still have another eight minutes before the beef might be ready. But we're going to make sure that our vegetables are ready before that and all sauteed and stuff. Alright, so that's our carrot peeled. We move on to the potato. I think we're making good time. So we're going to uh, get the smaller, more clean knife um, and uh, try and cut these into, which now I'm going to use that for its purpose, which is to um, fail at cutting along the... Yeah, it's pretty much built for failure. Okay, come on. <laughs> Note to self, learn how to use knives for cooking. And for God's sake, it's against me. There you go, that's in half. That's what it's for. And then we're going to kind of uh, dice this up as reasonable size pieces. Like that. I think I need to sharpen this knife a little bit not try and cut things at once. Yeah, I definitely need sharpening because it's struggling to go through carrots. Alright, I'm going to switch to this sharpening knife. That's a lot easier. So, um, yes, I need to learn how to properly sharpen knives. I've tried to do it to this one, which helps a little bit, but, um, I need to do a little bit more. Okay, so these both going in at the same time, so we're going to pop them in uh, a container, aka bowl, like that. Got a little bit of some beetroot on it, but it doesn't really matter because they're all going in the same soup eventually. So we want to dice this up into similar sized pieces. Assemble that and then we'll cut the other way. Wow! Efficiency. And that's going to go in there as well. Oh, I'll feed the other half. I'm actually going to do it that way because it's going to be easier. Alright, so that's going to go in there as well. And that's going to be uh, pretty much ready. Okay, so we're going to check on a piece of beef. Ooh! As you can see, I moved it to the back. Um, so we're going to try and fish a piece of beef out and see if it's anywhere near cooked. Uh, beef, please. Show yourself, coward. Alright, so we're going to poke it with a knife. Over here. It looks pretty much cooked throughout the middle as well, which is good. Okay, so that's uh, a bit five minutes less than uh, anticipated, but that's alright. So we're going to keep up, keep that going. I'm going to uh, pop that piece of beef back in so we only put it in the knife. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our other saucepan and we're going to put a bit of olive oil in it. Um, like that. And then we're going to saute um, our carrots and potatoes. That's something to note about the carrots and potatoes. You can also put celery in, but um, I realised that the celery I had was out of date, so I didn't use it. Um, and it was a bit floppy, so I didn't use it. But yes, um, you can also have celery in there if you want. So we're just going to let that oil get up to temperature a little bit. I'm going to get my additional spoon, and we're going to um, get ready with our 
carrots and potatoes. I'm going to count down from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then we're going to put them in. We're going to leave them to saute. Use my new favorite word for. Let's have a look. Three to four minutes. And we're also going to season them. Like that. So this is going to be a, hopefully quite a flavorsome soup. I'm going to turn the temperature up a bit. Oh, I'll try not to flip oil up very well. Alright, so you can hear that starting to sizzle away. We're also going to get our beetroot ready. And what we're going to do now that we've uh, prepared everything is we're going to strain out our... Uh, What's it? So I'm going to flick around there. I'm going to turn the heat down so I don't have to keep an eye on it as much. He says, turning the heat down. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get a... Ooh, we'll go for this one. This colander. And we're going to get this bowl. Like that. And we're going to kind of... Actually, I don't really need this thing. find how it is, I don't actually need the sieve, she's nice. Okay, so we've got to pour the water out and everything. All right, so we're gonna spin back around. I'm gonna close the thing where I got the sieve from. I'm gonna put that back down there. Okay, so we've got our beetroot and our lettuce ready for the next bit. Our, vegetable, our carrots and potatoes are still sauteing, which is good. I'm gonna leave that for another minute um, while I slowly calm down from my panic. Okay, which one do we need next? It is the... beetroot I think yes so we're gonna have cook this for another minute put it in this soup and cook the beetroot in the same way for the same amount of time um, what we're going to do while we're doing our um, beetroot is we're also going to add um, a teaspoon of tomato paste to the beetroot so get your tomato paste ready anybody can manage to follow my instructions then uh, at least this far then I'll be proud of them. I still have a uh, kind of beachy hands all over everywhere. So that's uh, almost there now. What we're doing next, okay. Uh, actually what we're going to do before that's finished is we're going to move our pan around temporarily, actually no, permanently. We'll move on to this tiny one here. Like that. And we're going to see if we can fish out the baby. Whoa. As you can see that's going quite nicely, if you can see in there. Definitely looks like a kind of bubbly, rocky thing. So we're going to stir around until we see our baby, which we hopefully will. Maybe. We may just have to deal with there being a baby. I can't find it. Bayleaf, I could ever appear, please. Alright, okay, we're going to give up on the hunt for the bay leaf, and what we're going to do is we're going to get our vegetables and we're going to pop them after, without the spoon, we're going to pop them into there. Wow! Okay, and we're going to move them about. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit more oil wherever I put it, it's over here. Everything's still going alright. I'm going to put a tiny bit more oil in there. And then we're going to get our beetroot. Alright. That's already hot, so I'm going to put that in there. And we're going to get our tomato paste. Paste. Um, we're going to pop that in there as well. I'm just going to squeeze a bit in there, like that. Alright. Alright, so we're going to do this for another three to four minutes. I'm going to try and mix about that tomato paste into the beetroot. And this should give the uh, borscht its nice red flavour. They're not flavour, colour. There you go. Colour and flavour. And it's stained the end of my spoon already. And it's 
some nice uh, beetrooty flavour as well, why not? Okay, we've also got our cabbage here, ready for the next bit, which will hopefully go in nicely. The only problem I'm going to have with this is where to store it, because <laughs> my little containers probably won't be enough. Um, Alright, so that's still going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and let you know when they're done. Bye! Alright, now that that's been going for about 3 or 4 minutes, we're done with them and we're going to pop them in the soup. Like that. Wow! Okay, so... We're also going to get our cabbage. I'm going to pop that there in as well, after I put in a little bit more olive oil, which I forgot to do. Panic! I'm glad that didn't go in any further, and that is ridiculous amount of oil, which I heavily handedly put in there. But that's fine because there's a hell of a lot of cabbage to go in as well. Like that. Um, yes, okay, so we're going to find the other spoon, which is here, and we're going to stir around the beetroot and stuff, which is starting to go a nice red colour, which you can't see because of the steam, but hey ho. And uh, I'll let you know once I have sautéed the cabbage. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so uh, the cabbage has been sautéing for about three-ish minutes. And what I've done while I've been waiting is I have murdered this um, parsley plant back here. And I've got the leaves and I've kind of diced them up a little bit in my hands. Um, and they're going to be ready for after we've left this stew for a little bit more. So now these are ready. The cabbages, we're going to turn off the heat there. We're going to attempt to transfer them to the main soup. Like that. Lots of cabbage. And it's all stuck to the bottom. Let's see if I can scrape a bit of that out. There you go. As much as possible. Alright, so. All in there, we're going to try and mix that a bit like that, and that is becoming a nice borscht. It looks pretty pretty, pretty pretty. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to season a little bit more because why not? Once we like our seasoning, a tiny bit more salt, um, and we're going to cover it with the lid and leave it for another 15 minutes just to make sure it's cooked for thoroughly. Um, and uh, Yes, I'll let you know after that. Alright, so we're coming up to about 15 minutes, and I think it's about done. So, I'm going to attempt to uh, serve myself a bowl. And um, what I thought of while I was waiting for 15 minutes, after what, well, after I cleaned up the uh, whole workspace, is I could attempt to lower this down a little bit, uh, to kind of get the best of both, both methods of serving it. So, first of all, I'm going to get my ladle. And I'm going to give myself a small serving of it and on its own. So I can find some beef. Like that. Kind of in that bowl. And that can be the um, the whole one. And then what we can do for the other one is, if I'm clever about this, is I can get some of the uh, liquidy bit and I can put it through the strainer. And we'll have the other type of bush. Wow! We'll have liquid bush. But the thin one. Wow, I've done both. Everyone's happy. There you go, Melosh, I did that for you. Um, okay, so. There you go, so we're gonna figure out how to store that in a few minutes. And I'm gonna have a taste after I've put my little leaf on it. Wow, it's a meal! I did it. Okay, so, so I'm very pressed for time. I'm going to try a little bit this one. Mmm. Get most of the flavour from just the water. Mm, that's very tasty. I'll finish that off in a minute after I've tasted this one. Fortunately, I don't think I've managed to get any beef, but we'll, that'll be alright. The carrots are a little bit raw. It's 
fucking raw. Um, Gordon Ramsay impression there. Mm. That is very tasty. So, we made, this is uh, Jim's Raw Cooking, and we made, um, this is the 21st episode actually, um, and we made Polish borscht in two different ways. Uh, thin and uh, chunky. If you have any other suggestions, please let me know. <gasps> Bye!